All right, to start understanding the dramatic and very damaging effect that fading can do to a wireless system, let's start looking at uncoded modulation. So as the name um, describes, uncoded modulation is just modulation without any channel coding. That means you're just transmitting raw complex symbols and demodulating or detecting them one at a time. Now, what I'm going to show you here is that uncoded modulation over a fading channel like this works really badly. It basically completely fails. So there is virtually no practical system that would ever transmit over a wireless channel without coding. So I'm not showing you this for the purpose that you go and build an uncoded modulation system over a wireless channel. I'm trying to teach you away from that. But what I'm going to do, I hope from this, you'll see the deleterious effects of fading and that will motivate us to look at channel coding and why it is so important. All right, so let's just mathematically describe the situation we're looking at. So very simply, we could look at it like this. We have a transmitted QAM symbol, say S of N, and it goes to a fading channel, which I'm just going to uh, indicate by H of N, and then I receive some symbol with noise. So in this model, this just one symbol at a time model, I've kind of made everything simple. I've seen perfect synchronization, and there's no ISI, and so as a result, you can just look at one symbol at a time. But you'll see, even in this idealized setting, fading is going to do a lot of damage. All right, just a quick review of uncoded modulation. All of this is covered in your digital comm class, but just a quick refresher. What you're doing is you're taking a sequence of bits and you're mapping them to complex symbols like QPSK or so on. And you take some number of bits per symbol. But the key terms that describe uncoded modulation are the modulation rate, which is the number of bits per symbol. So in this case, it's two, like QPSK. You would have a symbol period, which is the duration of each symbol, which I'm going to denote by T. And that gives you the bit rate by taking the modulation rate divided by the symbol rate, or symbol period. Okay, now most systems use some type of QAM modulation, which you should have all known from digital COM, but here are the pictures. So for example, QPSK here, I'm taking two bits and I'm mapping it to one of four points. Or in 16 QAM, taking four bits and mapping it to 16 points and 64 QAM takes six bits. Note one thing about all these QAM mappings is that you can consider it by taking half the bits and mapping them on the uh, in phase axis or x axis, and the other half of the bits mapping them on the imaginary axis. All right, now you've figured out the transmit. Let's look at what happens at the receiver side. So, in the receiver side, the receiver gets a symbol S multiplied by some fading channel with noise. I've dropped the symbol index N because we can look at one symbol at a time. Now, what the receiver wants to do is from R. And let's say it knows H, so there's perfect channel estimation. We're going to talk about that later in subsequent units. It wants to estimate S or detect S. So the most common way to do this is statistically, you, do, you pick the what's called maximum likelihood estimate. So probabilistically, you say, well, if the transmitter transmitted symbol M, M SM, I say, well, what's the probability of getting what I observed R? And then you just pick the one that has this highest likelihood, which makes complete sense as a method. So more concretely, if you had to work it out for this simple Gaussian channel, you do this. Well, if you knew the S, and remember that we're playing in the universe where you know H, so this is all known. So it's a known quantity plus a Gaussian, but that's just another Gaussian with a mean shifted by H of S and this same variance as W. So that means that if you know S and H, R is also Gaussian with this mean HS. So that likelihood is given by the complex Gaussian expression, which is this standard exponential. Now, how do we maximize that? Well, that's pretty easy. Here's our likelihood function, and I want to maximize this over S. But S only appears here in the numerator. So if I want to maximize this, I want to minimize that numerator. And because there's a minus sign here, 
So I want to pick the minimum of r minus h test squared. But the trick here is to rewrite this as the minimum of um, z minus s, where z is just r divided by h. And you can just get this by pulling that h out and remembering that the minimum of something is the same as the minimum of h times something. So we just have this. Now, what does that mean? Well, all I do is kind of two steps. I take my receive symbol, and I take my known channel gain, which I'm assuming I know perfectly, and just divide it. And that is called equalization, because I'm equaling out the effect of that channel. And that gives me this equalized symbol z. And then I simply pick the qualm symbol that was closest to z. So if this is sounds unfamiliar to you, go back and review it in digital com and just zooming through it quickly here. So that was a lot of math. It's super easy to understand just visually. So all I do is I take my equalized symbol, z, which is remember just the receive symbol divided by the channel gain. And I have my, let's say, 4 or 16 or 64 possible qualm points. And I simply pick the one that's closest. So for example, if I got this equalized symbol here, I would say, oh, I transmitted S1. And then whatever bits corresponded to S1, that is what I would detect pretty easy. But, of course, it can go wrong. And how is it going wrong? Well, let's say I have Z, all right? I, this is, I, sorry, I transmitted a symbol SM, and I will get some noise, and so I will hit some Z here. Now, this symbol will be error correct, I will correctly decode it, wherever the this final point is still the closest to SM or what's called the decision region for SM. In this particular case, as long as this Z lands in this quadrant, the top left quadrant, um, it, the closest symbol will be this uh, transmitted symbol here, SM, and it won't make an error. On the other hand, if I got a big enough noise in the wrong direction, like here, I start with SM and the noise is sufficiently large, it pushes you out of the correct decision region. In this case, then the closest symbol becomes here, and then I would have made an error. So this is how we can compute the error. Now, talking about computing errors, there's a couple of different uh, ways you can talk about it for uncoded modulation. You can talk about the symbol error, which is just that the error I get, um, the average number of errors I would get in detecting the symbols, or the bit error rate, which would be the average number of errors I get per bit. So even if you have a symbol error, some of the bits might be correct. All right, and we're just going to just probabilistically assume that all these symbols are transmitted equally. So let's look at the symbol error rate, just quick review on an AWGN channel. So in this case here, um, we have the symbol is S plus a V, where there's no fading. And then if you review in your digital comm class, you get that the symbol error rate is given by an expression, which depends on the SNR, and what's called the Q function. Remember, the Q function is just a complementary CDF of a Gaussian. All right, and the important point here is that the SNR goes up, as you would expect, the symbol error rate goes down. And you can also get all these expressions for bit error rates and so on. Just to show you some of the expressions um, you can get, this uh, graph, which I stole from the web, computes the symbol error rate for all sorts of QAM constellations, like QPSK, 16 QAM, and so on. And you get the trend in all of them that they have this kind of exponential-like decay with the SNR. Of course, the higher order modulations need more SNR. That's not uh, surprising because you're transmitting more bits. You can get all the expressions for this um, from for example, Proacus's book, I'm not going to go over them, but you have, I just want to show you here the uh, fact that they decay quickly. Remember, this is on a log scale here. All right, if you want to actually simulate it yourself, MATLAB has great tools. You can literally get one of these curves in a few lines. So I just, what I do is I just um, construct a set of vectors that I want to uh, test the SNR. In this case, I wanted to go from minus 5 to 11 dB. And then for each SNR, I can create a AWGN channel object and literally just tell it the SNR that I want. 
and then I take my transmitted symbols, I run it through that channel, and then I do, they have a built-in function for detecting called QAMDMOD, and then that gives me the estimated bits, and then I can compute the bit error rate and graph it. So just a few lines of code, MATLAB makes this super, super easy. All right, now we have looked at bit error rate for an uncoded modulation. It doesn't look too bad. Watch what happens when you have fading. All right, so in fading, we have our H, and this is some uh, variation in the channel, perhaps, for example, due to multipath interference. And I go ahead and do the same thing because we know what's optimal to do. I go ahead and equalize it. And now when I equalize this, I divide the transmitted signal by S, but I also divide the noise by S. So I kind of get a H, sorry. I get an effective noise, which is W divided by H. Now let's look at the SNR. The effective noise energy will be scaled by the original noise energy by H squared. So I get the effective noise energy is n not divided by h squared. So when h is big, that noise energy goes down. Great. But when it's small, it's going to go up. And so when I take the SNR, I get that uh, number on the bottom, and I get my expression here, h squared, yes, over n0. So if we have a fading channel, which is going up and down, when that um, fading, when the h is high, that means I'm getting, for example, constructive interference. My SNR is going up. But when it goes down, for example, when I'm getting destructive interferences in those deep fades, the SNR is going down, and this is going to hurt our performance. All right. Let's take a look to understand that damage in performance. Let's take a look at the average SNR, SER, the simple rate, on a fading channel. You could also compute the average bit error. You're going to get the same basic uh, qualitative phenomena. So here's our fading channel. It has its age. And we know that when fading is random, it's like an unfaded channel with this random SNR, which is scaling with h squared. So we can define what we call the average SER, which is kind of an average over all the possible realizations of that channel. So I just simply in mathematical lingo, I just taking the expectation of this random variable which means I would integrate it by the probability distribution of that random variable. Now, here's a kicker. If H is Rayleigh distributed, for example, when you have a large number of paths with random uh, phases, uh, then you're going to get that that SER will just, we know, sorry, that the SER will be exponentially distributed around the average SNR, so we can compute it just by integrating with the exponential PDF. All right, let's take a look at what that average SER looks like. So with Rayleigh fading, we said that it's exponential with some average. And we know that for a particular gamma, particular uh, SNR, we know what the SER looks like. It's given by that Q function. Now, I want to take the average of that SER with this exponential random variable. For this, I will need a little lemma, which is in the notes of how to compute show, but I'm just, just trust me for now, just some algebra, that if I want to take the expectation of a Q function with an exponentially random variable, it has this formula here where this is correct for large gamma. Then, plugging that in, taking the expectation, I get this. I won't go through all the math, but here is the uh, key point that the average SNR still decays with the average SNR, but it decays very slowly. You can see here that it decays as 1 over gamma bar. Gamma bar is the average SNR. But in AWGN channel, it decayed exponentially. So it'll go down, but it'll go down much slower. If you don't believe me, let's take a look at a plot. So on this graph here, there are four lines. Just look at two of them for now. The blue line is our AWGN symbol error rate, and it decays exponentially. But look at what happens to fading, which is the red line. It decays, but it decays much, much slower. The other two lines are just um, mathematical approximations for this. We can, uh, you can get very good approximations if you don't want to uh, work it out exactly. But I just want to show you here how bad that fading is. 
let's take a look at a 10%, uh, sorry, a 1% error rate. That is not particularly rel uh, reliable communication. Imagine you were trying to transmit 100 uh, bits of even short packet. If they, each one of these were independently faded, with a 1% error rate on each bit, then you would have almost uh, certainty, not almost certainty, but with a high probability, your packet will be an error. So you would actually need much lower error rate. But even at 1% error rate, look at this. On an unfaded channel, you need maybe 5 or 6 dB of EBNO to get at 1% error rate. But look at what you need for at faded channel, 17, maybe 18 dB. And if you're talking about 10 to the minus 3 error rate, well, it goes even off the screen here. It's really, really bad. So the conclusion is that fading on an AWGN fading, sorry, really damages uncoded modulated symbols. Now, in the demo, I show you how to actually do those curves, for example, for a 16 form. So check that out. I'm not going to, uh, pretty straightforward MATLAB code because uh, the COM toolbox has all the things you need to do to do it. And um, before we go on, I just want you to go ahead and try to compute a theoretical curve to match this, just so you get an idea about what the mathematical relations are between faded and unfaded systems. But the big lesson I want you to take away from this quick section is that when you have fading, uncoded communication systems perform really badly. But don't give up because we we'll stick around for coding and we'll see that can get you out of that situation at least some of the time.